Good afternoon, my friends. This is Kardec After Lunch, a initiative of spiritismstudy.org and hosted by Kardec Radio. Uh, please allow me to make a couple of announcements here. We uh, please recommend you download the app of Kardec Radio, available on both iOS and Android, and listen to our programs and podcasts. Also, feel free to send Kardec Radio, uh, sorry, uh, questions to Kardec Radio's Twitter account. And all of this work is done by volunteers, but there are costs associated with web and app hosting, along with broadcast and publishing. So please be kind and donate, so this work of love may continue for many years to come. God bless. Um, we are doing uh, our work here on Kardec Radio a little bit different than what I've been doing on Spiritism Study. Uh, and because I, I Spiritism Study, I have the option of doing uh, one book a day. Uh, and that's what I've been doing. Over here on Kardec Radio, since I limited to one session a week, uh, I would like, at least initially, until I get some more input from our viewership, uh, I would like to stay only with the Spirits book. Even though uh, I believe there was a recording just played about the questions and answers, uh, I would like to provide a little bit of commentary and keep the channels open so our viewers can log in and interact and ask questions, uh, be it pertaining to a project or pertaining to the, the specific question we're reading or another one. So let's start. So if you have this specific edition, I recommend you follow along the reading with us and uh, you can do it via the book, you can use an uh, ebook, or you can do it online through kardecpedia.com, which I recommend a lot. Uh, thank you, Vanessa, for being with us, uh, Celia, Regina, and Linda Sutter. Thank you for all the support. And allow me to start. We are talking or uh, reading on part one, chapter one, and uh, the intent of this project is to reach you during your day-to-day -day routine, whereas you'll be able to utilize some of this knowledge that we're going over in your daily routine during those opportunities that God creates and places in front of us every day. Remember, it is very easy being a spiritist at a spiritist society. It's another thing being a spiritist with friends, coworkers, and unknowns who do not know you and have no expectation of your conduct, right? So try to be kind to everyone. And along the way, I guarantee if you change your, your thoughts, your words, and your actions, everything else will fall in place little by little. It's not a, um, a quick trip, if I put, can put it that way, but it's well worth the effort. So proof of proofs of the existence of God. Number four, where may we find proof for the existence of God? And the answer is, in an axiom you apply to all your sciences. There is no effect without a cause. If you would search for the cause of whatever is not the work of human beings, then reason will answer your questions. In a commentary by Kardec, to believe in God, we need only to behold the works of creation. The universe exists, therefore it must have a cause. Uh, make a break here. So, of course, uh, science uh, believes in the theory of Big Bang, and but they have no cause for it. They just have the idea that the, at one point in time, the universe was all in condensed state and a big explosion dispersed all this matter throughout the universe and is still expanding. Um, but what is the cause? We see some people seem to think it's all random, right? But there is a cause. There is a providential reason for everything in existence. Continuing, to doubt God's existence would be to deny that, very, that every effect has a cause and to believe that something could have resulted from nothingness. Question number five. 
all human beings have within them the intuitive sentiment of God's existence. What can we conclude from this? Answer, that God exists. Otherwise, where would such a sentiment come from if it were not based on something real? This is an application of the principle that there is no effect without a cause. So it's something that, uh, like you just mentioned, it's an intuitive sentiment. Uh, there's hardly a, a people or a civilization in history and recorded history that did not worship uh, some kind of God, right? Or whatever uh, deity they devised or was um, legated to them. So continue to number six. My or inner sentiments about the existence of God be the result of education and the product of acquired ideas. So at the time we were reading uh, one of Kardec's work, I tried to encourage you to reflect about why he will ask such question and why some questions seem repetitive or seem to go around the same subject. And I say that uh, with the reason that we should try to behave and think as Kardec did. He was a lifelong teacher, educator, researcher, and he knew he was writing those books, not for himself. He was writing for people to read it. And those people had various levels of education. So um, some of the beliefs at that time was that, and, and you will be acquainted with those if you read the introduction, which I also recommend. So it's very common for us to skip and go directly to the questions, but please take the time and effort necessary to read the introduction. Uh, and I invite you to have a dictionary along with you. Also, oh, sorry, there's some comments here. I failed to see. Oh, Tommy Lou is here with us too. Nice having you. Uh, Gabriel Inacio, thank you for your support. And the idea is we have to have developed an inquisitive mind, okay? When we're reading Kardec, and it seems to be an involved reading full of complex words that are no longer used, but please take the time to research those. Research historical figures they are mentioned as well. Look up customs and beliefs of the society in the 1850s when those books were written to be able to be better acquainted with the work that you're reading, okay? But coming back here. So the question was, might an or inner sentiment about the existence of God be the result of education and the product of acquired ideas? Basically saying, isn't society's, uh, I guess, origin for instilling into us the belief that there is a God? Uh, yes, we are studying the Spirit's book, uh, Gabriel. Uh, and the answer is, if that were the case, why would members of your primitive cultures have this intuition? And the commentary by Kardec is, if the sentiment of the existence of a supreme being were only the product of education, it would not be universal. Like all scientific ideas, it would only exist in the minds of those who receive such education, right? So like I said, those uh, questions he asks is not for his enlightenment, but our enlightenment. So let's please uh, develop not just the faculty of you know, being able to read such a complex, you know, perhaps long reading, but after you first read it, Come back and study it. After you study it, come back and read it again. Because at every point of our lives, we're only able to consider the knowledge that is exposed to us in regards to the knowledge you already have. So when you're second reading, you will be more resourceful. Seven. Could we find the first cause of the formation of things in the innermost properties of matter? 
And basically he's going about all the different um, ideas that people have to explain our existence, where we come from and such and such. And basically he's saying like, if science develops enough to find the building block of matter, wouldn't that explain everything? And the answer by the spirit. Even if you could, what in turn will be the cause of these properties? There must always be a first cause. In the commentary, to attribute the first formation of things to the innermost properties of matter will be to mistake the effect for the cause, since such properties are themselves an effect that must have had a prior cause. Right? So, even though we are in search of God's particle uh, through the Large Hadron Collider in Europe and other means, finding the building block, although, of course, it's a endeavor worth of such effort, it, it would not perhaps give the answer to the meaning of existence as some perhaps will believe. Number eight. What about the idea that attributes the first formation of all things to an accidental combination of matter, perhaps the chance, and such is perhaps the most dominant, uh, the prevailing idea about the formation on the science side, big then. On the religion side, some believe creation in six days. So the answer, another absurdity how could anyone with any common sense believe that chance is an intelligent agent moreover what is chance nothing the commentary by kardec is the harmony that governs the forces of the universe reveals certain set combinations and designs and thus an intelligent power to attribute the first formation of things to chance would be nonsense because chance is blind and cannot produce intelligent results. An intelligent chance will no longer be chance. Something that produces an intelligent result cannot be random, right? Question number nine. Where may we see in the first cause When we're seeing the first cause, a supreme intelligence superior to all other intelligences. And the answer is, you have a proverb that says, the workman is known by his work. So look at the work and you will find a workman. Pride is what creates this belief. Human pride believes in nothing above itself. And that is why people think that they are so powerful, poor beings. The mere breath from God could blow them over. And the commentary is, we judge the power of an intelligence by its works, right? Since no human being could create what nature produces, it is obvious that the first cause must be an intelligence superior to humankind. Whatever may be the marvels accomplished by human intelligence such intelligence itself must have a cause the greater the results the greater the first cause must have been no matter what name you give it that intelligence is the first cause of all things the marking uh, place will be leaving off and i'll make some further commentaries about our project so uh i started this project back in january 1st of this year and on april thereabout i started those live sessions and all the initiatives at spiritismstudy.org are enhanced or devised with the purpose of assisting you in starting your own study hello gladys thank you for being here with us because i really would like to see more people reading the book really consider that from the source do not take what I say, my interpretation, as being at face value, right? I would like to, each one of you to consider from the source. 
If you'll be nearby Orlando tonight, I'll be giving a presentation on there will be false Christs and false prophets in Portuguese, however. But I appreciate your support and I'll be broadcast live from Plenitude Spiritist Society. Thank you. Thank you, Kardec Radio, of all who make this possible. And Godspeed to all.